I've heard it again and again. I just found out about aphantasia a few days ago, and my world feels like it's crumbling. You find out, you frantically search the net for answers, but some of the most simple questions still lack easy-to-find answers around this topic. We aim to solve that. That's why Aphantasia Meow is partnering with Dr. Reeder, a UK-based neuroscientist. Our goal? To determine an objective measurement process to the presence of aphantasia in one's thoughts. And we need your participation. Meow. All right, welcome back to Aphantasia Meow. My name is Alec. I help people to visualize who can't or who want to visualize stronger. All right, so this is a really exciting video. I've got some huge things to announce here, so make sure to watch the whole video for the full rundown. And in essence, we're looking for participants to a study. I'm also going to be rounding up the series we just finished up uh, around prophantasia. So um, keep in mind, I'm looking for prophantasic study participants as well. Okay, so straight on to the details. Here's what we're doing. Aphantasia meow, me, Alec. I'm partnering with Dr. Rishan Reeder to pioneer a new testing process. The goal here in this study is to gather objective data on the difference of ability when it comes to somebody that experiences aphantasia and somebody that doesn't. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for 15 participants who experience aphantasia, 15 participants who experience regular phantasia, and then 15 participants who experience hyperphantasia. And here's a bit on the process. So we need to make sure as best that we can that the people that are gonna participate indeed do experience that type of visual imagination that they believe that they do. So I invite you to jump on an interview call with me. This call is gonna be 15 minutes long. We'll really hash out how you experience thoughts to make sure that you know, you're uh, definitely experiencing aphantasia or not. And I'll be sharing about the fine details about the testing process. And I just wanna say this is a huge opportunity to help us gather more understanding as a community, as a scientific community, as a community of aphants and visualizers on how the mind's eye actually works. And not only that, but it's a cool opportunity to help provide some much needed answers to the larger community. If you've ever been searching for answers on this topic and you've gotten a little frustrated because some of the info is hard to find or few and far between, well, this is your opportunity to participate and potentially help provide some much needed answers. So please book that interview call ASAP, okay? We're looking to get this thing going uh, right away. I'll also say, like I mentioned in the beginning, we're, we're also looking for a few prophantasics, okay? Not 15, we'd like to get maybe five to 10 or something like that. And it's gonna be a little bit customized. The, pro the testing process will be a little bit customized for those prophantasics. Um, and it's gotta be something where you can actually project, you know, physical images into your environment. So we're looking for like the extreme end of prophantasia. So if that's you, please, I know you're rare, Hit me up, okay? And last thing I'll mention is how this kind of relates to my overall arching program and the, and the journey of Aphantasia Meow, right? I started this thing three years ago. It started as an experiment, ended up working, and started taking on clients, right? Um, since then, yes, we've seen a lot of breakthrough with the people that I've worked with. However, those breakthroughs have always been largely subjective, and that's been one of the pitfalls of my work. So largely subjective, so somebody just verbally reports a breakthrough, right? Um, that got a little bit better when I started introducing things like the VMSQ, my custom uh, questionnaire that's largely based on the VVIQ. So when I introduced that, yes, now I have some more closer objective measurement of where somebody started and where somebody ended, because you can see the numbers increase, right? Um, but even that questionnaire is largely subjective, like people are just in their thoughts and then reporting a number. Right, so that's still a pitfall in a lot of ways. So one of the other hopes of this study is to start solving some of that subjectivity of even my program, you know, where, where uh, after this study we can go, okay, we see a clear difference between somebody that experiences aphantasia and somebody that experiences uh, regular visual imagining or whatever. And then let's say we start somebody, we have them fill out the study and find their results. They run through a program where they're increasing their mind's eye or unlocking their mind's eye, and then we have them do the study afterwards and see how their numbers objectively changed. So this could really give birth to some massive changes to the conversation of aphantasia in the mind's eye as a whole. Okay, so to wrap up, like I said, sign up now for that interview call. It's 15 minutes long. My calendar is really filling up quick. I think I already have 30 interviews on the books right now, so make sure you jump in there. Grab a call ASAP and we'll chat about your mind's eye experience and the finer details 
of the study and what exactly is going to be involved. All right. So I look forward to speaking with you and that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye.